Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Mexico. Um, it's We were just talking about how many years we've been broadcasting uh, the 5D Academy, and I was talking to some of my uh, followers and, and participants and friends that we've been together uh, Initially, we start. I started it during the academy in uh, February of 2015, and since ever since then, we've been pretty much consistent. Um, and you know, there are times when I'm traveling and doing my uh, uh, retreats and workshops, not able to do it. Or sometimes you don't feel good, or you feel sick, or something happens with your family, and you're not able to do it. But, but I'm just like when I look back uh, to the uh, uh, all these years that we've done it, uh, it's interesting because we've come a long way. And uh, the, there's some of my participants. They they've been with me all these years. And uh, actually, Marit, I think you and I have known each other since 2013. So, so, and also with Hilde, I mean, we have we have hit our 10 year, uh, yeah, Hilde Evenstad and Hilde Hogan, we have hit our 10 year mark marker, <laughs> and, and that's quite a bit of an accomplishment. Uh, for the rest of the people who are not connecting with me through Zoom and they're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, I'd like to welcome you. And I'm not able to answer your questions because uh, on this particular platform, if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me and ask me questions, then your best bet is to sign up through our website and come on our Zoom webinar meeting. And then that way I can see you and you can see me and you can ask me questions. The topic of our discussion today is gonna to be how to deal with suffering. And this is an epidemic. Suffering is something that majority of people on this planet are dealing with. And this basically is an event that has started it from a few thousand years ago. Uh, in the very beginning time, human beings, their mind, they were not thinking very much. So thinking was not a... Um, an event that was happening on a regular basis. Uh, human psyche was very, very primitive and it was not, not sophisticated. So majority of the thoughts that at that era and that time went through human minds was about shelter or food or protection. It wasn't anything about future or savings or 401k or stock market or what's going to happen to me and my family five years or 10 years from now on. Those kind of things did not exist, or there weren't any news coming from other places or other regions. So what has happened is as time went on, human mind has become more sophisticated and uh, it's running much faster. And let's say, for example, I'm going to give you, uh, so I'll give you some examples, and this is going to make sense uh, of what I'm talking about, and things will, will shift. The, 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 everybody thinks, everybody believes that because humans have the ability to think, and use the logic, it's an advantage on the rest of the planet, whatever's all these animals, vegetation, and we're superior beings because of that. But this ability of think to think is also a disease and 
has turned into an epidemic and is eating us alive from inside out. So we are suffering because of our ability to think, because we have no education of how to control this wild beast, which is running crazy and is taking you up and down and taking you into these dark valleys and creates all these stories in your head that do not exist. So I want you to reflect on this for a moment. Majority of human beings on this planet, they have a shelter, they have a roof on their head, and they're able to eat three times a day. Majority, I'm not talking about that minority or some regions of people that they're extremely poor or, or they don't have the very basic stuff. But today in 21st century, majority of human beings, they have their ess essential needs taken care of. Food is available. Clean water is available. We have electricity. We can heat up our homes or we can air condition our homes. Uh, there's transportation. There's communication. So our our very basic stuff is already available. So what happens is that we don't have to worry about a lot of the basic things. But what we do is we often, more than ever before, are caught into our minds. And we're thinking about future possibilities we're thinking about this moment is not good enough, is not complete, something is missing in this moment, or we're continuously contemplating on our, our past of what has happened, what went wrong. I could have done this differently. I could have done this better. I made a mistake, blah, 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 blah. And this is what's going on or worrying about future. And this creates what we call suffering. Because if, if we just simply take a moment out of our lives and stop and not run around and kind of reflect and look at how animals live, I mean, if anybody has dogs and cats, horses, sheep, and is around them, majority of the time, the animals are resting. They're not running around trying to build an empire or making more money or buying more real estate. A lot of times they're just what the new generation calls chilling out. They're resting, they're relaxing. But human beings, on the other hand, are continuously have this th feeling that they have to be chasing. They have to be continuously be productive and be doing things. So, and for most human beings on this planet, it's never enough. There's this attitude that whatever we have is not enough. And this has been kind of implemented in our psyche that we need more, more and more. And that's what something very interesting for me, migrating from North America to Mexico and living around, be, living with Mexicans, and observing Mexican culture, and especially in a smaller area, smaller towns, and which has been an amazing teacher for me. And I'm very grateful for existence to give me such an opportunity to be able to be a part of their culture and, and to see how 
they operate and and how they're happy with whatever they have. That's really amazing me, amazes me of observing their level of happiness and satisfaction with whatever they have. Now, of course, I'm not in their psyche to, to uh, communicate with them telepathically, but I can only say from what I'm observing with this culture that generally it's a happy culture. It's very family oriented. Uh, they love their kids and their parents and brothers, sisters. They get together. Uh, they're, they're always listening to music. They like dancing. They like cooking food together. And, and it's really amazing to see these people, how happy they are. So... Coming back to what I was talking about is that 100, 200 years ago, if you wanted information, if you wanted to know what's going on, and let's say you are living at that moment somewhere, I, it doesn't matter. You live in Buenos Aires, or you live in Oslo, or you live somewhere uh, in Middle East or wherever in the world you were, you basically 100, 120 years, 130 years ago, you had to go to the center of the town. So you would go to the nearest big city and normally people would go there to barter and you know, maybe somebody had a sheep and they wanted to take their sheep there and sell their sheep and uh, exchange it for some cheese or uh, whatever, some tools they wanted to exchange things for. And so people would go to the center of the town and get together with others and they would exchange information. And uh, they were telling, oh yeah, in my region, there was a flood or there was fire and um, or some tribes are, are planning to attack each other or there's some disease, whatever it is, that's how they would exchange information because there was no social media, there was no telephone, there was no television, there was no radio. Um, so information exchanging information was very, very slow. So, uh, that, you know, only in the past couple of hundred years ago, we started having newspaper printing machine and being able to print. So information was, by the time you got newspaper and you got something on print, that, that would have been like a week ago. And uh, that news that you received was old. Many other things had already happened. Now, why am I explaining this part to you? Because I want you to understand this. Is because information was traveling very, very slow, humans' minds were not also sophisticated and thinking very fast because of the amount of information being available and the information getting exchanged was, was moving in a very slow way. As technology developed and information became more available and exchange of information, the speed of information picked up. Human minds started to work faster. And as technology got developed, we were able to create factories and we were, cre we were able to create schools. 
uh, universities and kind of pushing our kids into going to schools and to universities and stuff like that. We organize these things and we organize this machine that started to take place. And so information began to exchange on a faster pace. This speed of information increased the speed of human thinking. And as we're going forward, we have arrived at a place that now, now what's going on? Almost information could be instantly, news could be exchanged and could be delivered from any, any part of the planet to the other part of planets almost instantly. So with, it's with just the telephone, I can write down what we're doing and pick up the phone and start broadcasting or sending news and anybody anywhere else in the world can pick it up. So in order to do that, we need the infrastructure for it. it means we need more cell towers and now they have turned to 5G. Uh, we need more telephone lines, landlines, uh, the TV stations, the radio stations, all of these infrastructure that has been built in past 100 years, 100, 120 years. It works based on um, exchanging of waves, sending waves, information in the form of waves, electromagnetic waves. This electromagnetic waves, when, when as, an, as a race, we are living in a society which is filled by electromagnetic waves in all kinds of different ways. We're also bombarded by electricity, we're bombarded by nuclear power, and all sorts of different kind of a variation of different sources of creating energy. So because of this speed in information, human mind is started to work faster and faster. And as most of us have experienced that sometimes it's almost impossible to shut down your mind. There are times that you kind of want to pick up a gun and put into your head and shoot yourself because your mind does not stop. It's just running and running and running. Then we listen to the news. And what does the news do? And barely ever, you're going to turn on the TV or you're going to go to any kind of news channel and say, yeah, today 5,000 people in Belgium came together in a park and they sat in silence and they prayed. Last week, 500 people in Republic of Congo, they came together and they prayed for the earth. You know, they, you don't hear these kind of things. What you hear is doom and gloom and, and, and there's going to be war and there's going to be pandemic and there's going to end of the, and uh, the planet, weather is changing and you only hear bad things. Things that create anxiety nervousness, things that activates your mind. That's what we're hearing all the time. So naturally, our minds are running very, very fast. The mind is busy. It's going, 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 going. 
and when the mind is is busy and it's going 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 where is it going where does the mind go you can you can observe it for yourself take a moment and observe your own mind for a day or two what you can do is you can take a notebook and kind of or a week you can you can take one week for yourself and say you know what this week i am going to be observing my mind and i want to know the content the subjects of stuff happening in my mind i want to know what's going on and i'm going to take a note of it i i challenge you to do that i recommend you to do that and you would be very very fascinated to find out that barely hardly ever the content in your mind has anything to do with right now if you investigate and take a look at your mind it's not here it's everywhere else but here And then when the mind is not here and it's everywhere else, naturally, suffering comes with it. Because it's like, could you put a five or six year old child, okay, and give him a machine gun, for example, and teach him when they pull this trigger, it starts shooting. And then let's say you're somewhere in public or somewhere in the nature, but there's there's animals around, and you leave this kid with this with this machine gun. And it's really fun. Five, six, seven-year-old kid, and it's gonna pull the trigger, and the machine gun starts going pa 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 and it starts killing humans or or animals or destroying things. And then you come back and you're just worried about why this happened because you left this powerful tool in the hands of a child who has no awareness and training or self-consciousness of how to use it and not use it. So the mind is a very powerful instrument. It's a very powerful tool. And we, as a race, don't have a clue of how to deal with it. Majority of people on this planet have zero training, zero, of how to deal with their mind. There's no education. It's only today, these days, past maybe, 20, 30 years and past 10 years. Now there's teachers, people coming and trying to help each other. And the subject is a little bit has come on the surface. And most of the teaching is about how to make it more powerful and how to create, use your mind in order to manifest what you want means give it more power not managing it but using it for personal use not for the good good of all so even this training is not really the proper one and then so what happens is then people come and tell me Zarathustra I am so stressed I'm suffering yeah of course you're suffering you're suffering because, because you don't have a clue of what's making you suffer. It's your mind that suffers, suffer, make you suffer, and you don't even know how to deal with it.
most people don't even know what is going on with their suffering. They have no idea because majority of people on this planet believe that their thinking mind is who they are. Whatever they're thinking is who they are. So naturally, there is a lot of suffering. There's a lot of stress on this planet and it's getting worse and worse. So, and there is the, when I first started doing what I'm doing is I very quickly realized that the ordinary meditations, the, med the type of meditations that used to be helpful hundred years ago or in the past of the history of human humans do not work because those meditations were helping a more unsophisticated mind. Since the mind has become super sophisticated, now we have to counter that. And in order to counter it, we have to come with more sophisticated type of meditation more sophisticated type of methods of how to overcome this. So that's why I created certain type of exercises, practices, and training programs of how to counter that in order to bypass this thinking mechanism that creates suffering and in order to be able to sink into and find this inner peace within ourselves. So now I'd like to open up this panel for those of you, just one moment, I'm sorry. I need electricity. Um, so now I'd like to open up the panel for those of you who have any questions or comments, if you wanna, you can, Unmute yourself and we can talk about it. So what you have to do is just uh, go to the uh, unmute part of uh, the box. Uh, and then you unmute yourself, and then you can ask me a question. No questions? Good. <laughs> Nobody's asking me questions. Yeah, hi. Go ahead. Do you mean me? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Do you mean me? Yeah, go ahead. You, okay. You, um, I want to say something um, about you. You spoke about the time 100 years ago or a bit more than 100 years ago. I had the very big luck to have a grandmother. She died in 1997. Mm -hmm. And I was 40 years old, nearly 40 years old, and she learned me a lot of um, fundamental things like singing when you're working in the garden, um, go in the forest when you need something for health, work right. with herbs, produce your own oils, your own medicines. and. Right. She told me stories about her life. She was one of 13 childs. Uh huh. And a poor family um, eat the things from the fields. And I'm a, I'm a farmer daughter. And mm -hmm. in this heavy time now, it's so good for me to have, to have all these things, the stories from my grandmother, to learn from her how to right. work with the nature. And I'm in, um, oh, I don't know the English word, the German word is in Demut. Right. You understand Demut? 
No. No, but but uh, just for the sake humility. of humility, I'm yeah. often very humility because right. I had learned this. Right. And now, in moment, we had a very big water damage in our house. It's really big chaos. Okay. But I can can stay alive and can laugh because I had this good roots. Right. And the most people today didn't have these roots. They have only, like you said, the electricity and all these new modern stuffs. Okay, right. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing, Susanna. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody else wanted to ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, Monica. I'm just thinking, if we're talking about people 100 years ago, do you really think they were happier? that we are today, or? Um, what I'm referring to, actually, the reason I used a um, hundred years ago, uh, or I refer to that, it, that was a point of reference. What I wanted to explain is because the, 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 speed of information was very, very slow back back then, okay? The, the human minds uh, were very much slower. So, and of course, I wasn't here 100 years ago, so and neither have you, so neither, neither of us can speak for, from I cannot speak from direct experience. Normally, whatever I teach is my own direct experience, but I'm only assuming that 100 years ago, 200, 200 years ago, the human mind was a lot more slower. That means less thoughts. Less thoughts means more inner peace. Yeah, I believe human beings back in the day, not whether they were happier or not, but their mind was not running as fast as they're running today. Does it make sense? Yes, yes, it does. So you mean that just by shutting down all the influences we get, it will... I, I, I just think they didn't think so much, you know? It was, things were very simple. Life was mechanical, you know? You, you uh, people didn't travel so much. Uh, you lived in the same area. You followed whatever your parents did. You would do that. Um, it was a very simple, in comparison to today, it was much more simple and it was more tribal. Like, for example, you know, 100, 200 years ago, you, if you had kids and let's say parents having kids, father dies, goes to war or gets a heart attack and there's a mom with two kids, three kids, well, they all lived it was a tribal type of living. You lived in a village. You lived in a small town. Your family was there. The grandma, grandpa, brother, sisters. Things were not spread out. So you had support. They ate together. They cooked together. They helped each other. It was very tight. I mean, it had its disadvantages too. But you didn't have to worry about babysitting because... You know, your sister was there, your your uncle was there, and all the kids grew up together. They, you know, it, it wasn't like today. I agree. I'm just thinking, <clears throat> my dad was born 105 years ago. I was just thinking about him and his life. And that is... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, the times change. I mean... I'm not a kind of person who sits here and worries about, oh my God, everything is changing or, 
even where I'm living, where I live, it's changing every day. They're doing construction here continuously and it's continuously changing to something else. I have friends who are complaining, oh my God, T Tulum used to be this, used to be that. But for me, it's like, that's life. It's always changing from one thing to another and I cannot be attached to what it used to be. It, it is what it is. And even this is going to change, maybe for better or for worse, but that's how it is. I'm not gonna sit down here and complain about it. So this is where we at in the, um, at this pivotal point in our the history of mankind. And actually where we're at is is a very powerful time. This is in a very strong, a strong transformation is happening right now. This is like the platform for evolving and to migrating to a higher dimension. And, and when I'm talking about higher dimension, I'm not talking about physically being teleported into another planet. I'm talking about that the, we have this opportunity as a race to evolve and to open our consciousness to the fifth dimensional consciousness. We, we are at that point that the mind has become sophisticated enough, its capacity is large enough that we can open up to a new way of being which maybe in the past, we didn't have that available for us. Um, I just unmuted myself. I was probably too early. This is Karen. Hi, Zarathustra. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, hi, Karen. I, uh, yeah, go ahead, Karen. I just, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just have a few questions as well. I just, um, you know, so uh, you, ex you talk, you talked a little bit about um, new ways of medita meditating or new tools or things that you've created. Can you expand on that a little bit more, please? I haven't been on your website and in the academy for a few weeks now. So, um, but it sounds really good because meditation, the, the way yeah. we used to do it hasn't worked for me in quite some time. Yeah. Where are you from, Karen? I'm from Germany. Germany. Yeah. We just had a huge, huge thunderstorm, which is why I have to use my mobile data. Right. Uh, so, but yeah, I didn't want to miss this one again. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. We had a nice thunderstorm last night too here in, in Tulum. And uh, actually it woke me up a couple of times in the middle of the night. So, uh yeah, I mean, I'm on uh, the speaking of uh, meditations, like, I don't know uh, if you've been at any of my events in in Europe or anywhere, but uh, almost in every every event, uh, what we do in order to quiet the mind, now, let's say if I'm doing a shamanic healing circle, or I'm doing a third eye activation uh, event, or whatever is whatever is the event, is that we do a series of active meditations, uh, like jumping up and down, dancing, shaking the body, screaming, uh, speaking gibberish, or laughing. Uh, techniques and methods that calms the mind down. Mm -hmm. And it it sort of disarms the mind. Mm -hmm. And then it, it just allows you to migrate from the head to the heart, to come into this space of silence and this space of openness. Mm -hmm. Then from there, it becomes the communication changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah, no, unfortunately, I haven't been. I was actually looking at your uh, workshops in Germany. In our, when was it? In April, May or something. But I'm taking care of my mom, so I wasn't able to go. I couldn't find somebody to be here. Right. But um, but that makes a lot of sense because 
<laughs> you know the med the old the, the the meditations for me now I've been on this path for a long time and I've done a lot of different things but they used to work at some point where but now it I feel like they br bring you somewhere outside of yourself and there everything is nice and then you come back and then you're in your body and and it the life here is still the same so um and and I've tried it still because I I don't know if you, that would be another question would be like do you feel do you also have the experience that the last few weeks have been extremely tough um they were extremely tough for me for some reason I was looking at all kinds of I was looking in my toolbox and I, I couldn't find anything that would help me through and I know that we're in this tough times and they're going to be everything is going to be amazing but sometimes I'm like oh my god when is this really going to change to the better because I'm I'm a little bit uh, like really uh, it has been so tough right. the last week. right I I understand I completely understand and relate to what you say um you have to understand that this is a planet of energy and it's alive and it's got pulse so planet earth breathes and it it's got its heart and heartbeat and anytime you in any way you're dealing with energy work there's the expansion of the energy and the contraction of it and that's how if you look at it human human body works you know you breathe in and you breathe out you breathe in and you breathe out you have activities during the day and then you sleep at night so there is this expansion and contraction and so as go the nature and the nature of this planet it's it's an energy field so yes, there are times that the volume of energy increases and things appear to be very, very tough and intense. And then there are times that things mellow down. And you can even see it with the events on the planet. Sometimes things get really weird. You know, you may feel like, oh, maybe these nations or or the big superpowers are going to go to war with each other or some nations go to war with each other or things get really intense uh politically or uh geographically um or locally in where you live you know like you said you had this major uh thunderstorm last night or or right now or, or, yeah just yeah just, right. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, so so um, you're dealing with a live entity. Uh, you, you, we're live what what we're living on the whole rock that we live in. in first of all, this rock is spinning around itself. And I believe I'm. I don't know the exact number, but it's about three hundred and thirty or three hundred twenty miles per minute. And this, this rock is spinning. So, <laughs> I mean, you and I are not feeling the spin of it. And, uh, but it, it's moving so fast, so quickly. Already we're, we are uh, on a planet that is breathing, it's moving, and it's spinning. So there's a lot going on. Less mm -hmm. alone when you you know you you just kind of go more inside yourself and and with everything is surrounding you is happening of course it's affecting your psyche especially if you're more sensitive yeah and because of that more than ever more than ever before we need guidance mean we need to work on ourselves we need to find and seek this place within ourselves with different methods i mean we have all tried alcohol drugs medication sex uh sugar stuff like that yes those are some methods and they work for some people but it's not permanent you know, we all have medicated ourselves. We all know how to do that. 
It's, this is not anything new that I'm sharing with you. But if we want to go beyond that, then we need to have to use more advanced tools and more advanced teachings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also need guides. We need help, you know, because some people have, have gone a little bit further and they found a way. So I don't have a problem going. When I went to my teacher originally, you know, I realized this guy, he's found something that I wanted. He found inner peace. This guy has become like, you know, like the Buddha. He's still, he's quiet, and there's no movement inside him. Nothing can shake this guy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want this. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a problem going to him because who am I going to go to? Nobody else around me knows how to get to this place. This guy, is, this guy knows how to get, he got there. So I wanted to learn from him how I can get there. Am I... Uh, is this making any sense? Yes, uh, yes, I, totally. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I was just so I, I was dealing with all, even with fear that it, that hasn't been old fear. I know it might might be. I always comforted myself by thinking, oh my god, maybe it's a deeper level that I'm accessing of fear and stuff like that. But it everything seemed just to be just a band aid. And I totally agree with you. We need, um, we, we need guidance. Yes. Yeah, we need guidance. So like anything else. Your car breaks down, you don't bring it to me. You take it to a, you know, let's say you're driving a Volkswagen or a BMW, you're going to take it to a BMW dealership or mechanic. You take it to the expert who knows how to fix it. And your refrigerator breaks down, you need someone who fixes refrigerators. So, and this is the same thing that it comes to this. Uh, yeah, your mind is going crazy or you feel like some entities have taken over or whatever, you know, I'm, you know, you know, something has taken over or something is going on. Yeah. You need a witch doctor. You know, you need to go to someone who knows how to deal with this or mm -hmm. how to guide us back home into inner peace. So uh, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, also, I wanted to tell you, there's uh, I have like five uh, guided meditations uh, that they're on my website. They're, if you go to the home page of my website, you can you can find them right there. Uh, they're they're free guided meditations that you can listen to them. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you. You're welcome. Nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully we'll see you in Germany. I'll be in Frankfurt um, the first. Uh, I arrived there as a, as of the first. I mean, my first event starts on October third, which is a third eye activation. It's a it's a uh, five or six hour. It's a one day activation, uh, third eye activation training program that I will be activating everyone's third eye, as well as I teach you how you can do it to yourself and to others. So maybe you can come to that one. Uh, and then on the fifth, I have a shamanic healing circle, which is a two and a half hour event. You know, if, if you are taking care of your mom and you don't have time, you know, you, maybe you can take two and a half hours and come to this event. And then I have a weekend workshop, which is uh, starting Friday afternoon, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Anyway, I will be go I will be there, uh, and I also am available for private sessions. So, which of course, all of these are being done through my event coordinator, who are uh, it's the Fra it's the Frankfurter's Ring. That Frankfurter Ring, yeah, I know them. Yes, 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 I know them. Yeah, I had yeah. no idea that you're coming again back so soon. I will be traveling. I actually took yeah. some time off for of the of the of taking care of my mom, and I have somebody here who were, 
who was dealing who was taking care of her while I'm gone. I yeah. but I will yeah. look at the dates again. Thank you so much. I had no idea that you're coming you back her. in October. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hmm. So let's just take a few moments, um, kind of take a deep breath and just sink in and let's come back here. And, and I just like to remind everybody that when we come back here, here, there's nothing going on. Here, when the mind stills and thoughts disappear, there's nothing happening. Everything becomes super quiet or, or in Spanish, tranquilo. And this is something that I always recommend to my people to get in a habit of taking a moment out of their life, out of their day, and, and just come back to your own center. Because some of us are on this spiritual path, some of us have free time. But a lot of people, they're very busy, they got kids, they, they have jobs, um, whatever, you know, they, they just don't have time, they live in big cities, they're in traffic, stressing out. But when we get in a habit of taking a few moments and we stop, we put everything away and you may, you may want to meditate, close your eyes and meditate. And then you're trying to meditate, but it doesn't work because your mind is running crazy and you're thinking about a million different things except meditation. It's interesting, isn't it? You take your time to meditate, but now your mind gets more active. And now you're thinking, oh my God, I forgot to make some lunch for my kids. Oh, I forgot to, went to go to the cleaner and pick up some stuff from the cleaner and daddy, 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 daddy. But okay, so I'm going to give you a couple simple methods to go beyond your mind. And especially for the young generation, because their mind is fresh and and uh, and it's much easier for them to um, get into this because they're not so conditioned uh, with their old ways. They're fresh. So, uh, but this works for everybody. So all you have to do is simply very, very easy. It's super easy. You just look inside. And look at your thoughts. Just pay attention. Look at your thoughts. Do you see them? Do you hear thoughts? And I bet most people, once they start looking in their mind and they look at their thoughts, everything becomes quiet. There's no thoughts. But if there's still thoughts, then Follow the stream of your thoughts inwards. Examine to see where do they come from because no one has ever told us to question where do the thoughts come from. We are doing everything to stop the thoughts. But nobody is questioning where do they come from? So if you question that, the validity of your mind, question your mind, okay? Where is it coming from? 
and then the magic happens because you will realize that there is no mind mind is a bundle of thoughts that's all it is it's a bundle of thoughts randomly running and you think it's you so let's just take a look for a moment look inside and examine it. You can just see for yourself that the quality of your vibration changes when you simply are quiet and you come back to your center. When you go beyond all your thoughts, everything's gone. And you sink back here It's just very quiet and there's no story. Calmness comes, inner peace comes and comes with it bliss. Because our very true nature is bliss. But it's covered up by a lot of thoughts. So we don't get to experience it. This experience comes when we get rid of all this stuff. Okay, slowly, slowly come back. Thank you for showing up. It's very nice seeing you all and those of you who are in deep meditation, just stay stay in this place, stay in your presence. And just, you don't have to come out of it. Just let it work on you. And this energy keeps working on you. It's here. It's generated by your own self. And when, and it's also in the air, when we do connect to this magic of the presence of her majesty, the supreme being, this is the grand spirit, which is always here and is full of love. It's the love of God, which is here always, never abandons us. And when we dive into it, and we put the craziness of life away and we come here. And this reveals itself. It dances around you. It surrounds you. It plays around you. So after our academy is over, you just stay in this space. Don't push it. Just let it work on you. I look forward to connecting with you again, hopefully next week. Um, and I have some events coming in Europe uh, starting October 1st. I will be in Europe and I'm visiting four countries starting with Germany, from Germany, I go to uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Then I go to Aarhus, Denmark. And then Hamar, Norway. And then at the end, I will be in Warsaw, Poland. So hopefully we'll have a chance to connect with each other. Look forward to seeing you. You can refer to at my website, zaratustra.tv for more information. Thank you. Namaste.